This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and Humblewood.net. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo and today we're doing an unboxing of a preview brick of the upcoming set of pre-painted D&D miniatures in the Icons of the Realm line, Eberron, Rising from the Last War. This set is scheduled for release in March. If you want to see our full set review, click the eye in the corner of the screen sometime in March or afterwards when it's come out and you can see the full set. For now, many thanks to WizKids for sending us this preview brick. They also sent us the case incentive for this set, the Sky Coach, which we'll be reviewing in a separate video later this week. Eberron is described by wizards as a war-torn world filled with magic fuel technology, airships, and lightning trains, where noir-inspired mystery meets swashbuckling adventure. Glancing at the box, we can see that this set will include not only monsters from the recently released Eberron Rising from the Last War campaign setting book, but also more obscure monsters from previous D&D books like Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, the Monster Manual, and even the basic rules. So even if you aren't a fan of Eberron, you may want to check this set out. Before we get started, I wanted to thank BB Shockwave for writing up a great preview of this set. It really helped me approach the unboxing with more knowledge than I usually have. So some of the observations uh, coming up will likely be things I read in his write-up. So thank you, Shockwave. At the moment, I don't know much about Eberron lore, but I'll try to share what I've learned. For the full lore experience for each mini, check out our full set review upon release. Okay, I'm going to take the plastic off, cut all the tape on these boxes, and we'll get started with our unboxing. Okay, box number one. Now this set does not include huge minis. It tops out at larges. But let's see what we have to start with. All right, we have one of those creatures from um, one of the earlier books. This is a cloaker and uh, sort of a manta ray type creature. Uh, very nice, uh, scary face. That's our large in this one. Next we have, ah yeah, this is a Dolgrim. It is one of those evil uh, amalgamations when they took two goblins and forced them together to make this evil little creature. Uh, it's nice to get a shield, a sword, and a mace. The shield's just a little bit bent, but otherwise it came across pretty well. Our next one is... Uh, this is a human artificer. The artificer is one of the new classes, or the new class introduced in this Eberron book. Um, they kind of wield, they create and wield magical items and magical weapons and combine crafting and magic. And our last one in box number one <laughs> is the Shifter Artificer. So this cowboy looking creature is a Shifter. Uh, shifters are a new race introduced in this uh, set and we'll talk more about them as we go through. Um, but they have some animal aspects to them. Although you wouldn't really be able to tell that from this mini. He looks completely human to me. But uh, very good for your also gunslinger type uh, creatures or player characters as well. All right, moving on. Box number two. All right. This is Soul Katesh. She is... Uh, one of the overlords who, uh, back in the Age of Demons, way in the past of the Eberron history, was one of the evil rulers of the world. And she looks very cool, translucent, all over with a jewel uh, orb in her staff. And I think she's known as the Keeper of Secrets, if I remember my lore correctly. Uh, no facial features, really. Although, no, there's some eyes in there. So, yeah, that's really beautiful. And she is definitely a rare at number 44. Next we have... Uh, so this is labeled a homunculus, though it bears a striking resemblance to an iron guardian, or, yeah, I think it's iron guardian. Um, and, or iron defender, sorry. So, rather, this is a mislabeling the way that they mislabeled Tridrone, uh, when it was really a Kraken Priest back in Monster Menagerie 3, or if this is just a different kind of homunculus that I'm not familiar with, um, y'all can debate in the comments, and we'll try to figure that out. Let's see what we have next. Okay, this is a 
uh, Tarkanan assassin, uh, House Tarkanan employs many elite spies and assassins, and this is one of them. She has what looks like a, I can't quite tell what's going on, one of the, a, a magic sword, I believe, dragon mark maybe, and a regular sword as well. Uh, very cool looking, could be a player character mini. It's a common. And our last one in this set is a uh, Carnathy skeleton. Carnath was a country that early in the war um, experienced a lot of uh, famine and plague and were um, facing ruin. And instead of falling, uh, laying over, they inscripted a lot of undead to join their ranks. And this is one of those. Very detailed mini with lots of a really detailed paint job, I want to say. You can see the individual bones or the highlights in this armor. Um, and this looks really cool with the little um, kind of curved daggers. Very cool looking mini. I think I said inscript in the last, uh, in the last box. But conscript, since conscript into their army. It was a very militaristic society in Karnath. And they didn't really want to go down without a fight. Anyway, box number three. Looks like we have to start with a half ogre. This is one of those creatures that dates back to the core rule book, the basic rules, I should say. And oh, this looks really cool. Um, half ogre is, in this case, probably the result of uh, an ogre mating with a human or humanoid. And the, I have to say, the painting looks really cool on this one. The flesh somehow looks much more flesh-like than they have in the past with the shading and the general, uh, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it looks really good. He has like a little tankard on his belt, big ax, not bent at all. And yeah, that's a really cool one. Let's see what we have for belts in here. All right, hello. This is a Dolgaunt. This is a hobgoblin that has been corrupted. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool looking as well. It's got a kind of um, this tongue coming out of his mouth and tentacles coming out of his shoulders. It's a scary creature. And in this bag. Ah, this is cool. This is Belashira. I think she's known as the Lord of Eyes or something like that. And she can, see, she's like an evil Santa Claus. She can see everything you do and she gives you nightmare visions and horrible uh, dreams that make you want to claw your own eyes out. She has a little halo of eyes, which kudos to the person who thought that up. Finally in this box, hello, <laughs> this is the Dwarf Artificer. Uh, we get a couple of uh, Artificer varieties, which is great because that's our new class. Um, I'm not sure what exactly makes this fellow an Artificer. He just looks like a dwarf without any particular weapons, although it looks like he might have some brass knuckles on both hands. Uh, he has... It doesn't look like... An, it looks like he has a satchel with maybe spell scrolls uh, in his quiver. It doesn't necessarily look like arrows, so that's kind of neat. So he's a different kind of dwarf character for your player characters. This one's a bit heavier. All right. Ah, here we go. Another creature from older books. This is an Onkeg. Really heavy. He's got some... He's burrowing up out of the ground. He actually has some terrain on his base, which is unusual for Icons of the Realms. Again, a really cool paint job. Somehow the finish on some of these. Like, I was trying to talk about the half ogre. The finish on his skin, um, not not uh, at all shiny or, it just somehow looks a little different than some of the paint they usually use. And this one as well with the carapace, the way it's painted, uh, just looks some slightly different than some of the paint I've seen in the past. I'm not an expert painter, so I don't have the terminology to um, describe it correctly, but he's quite a heavy figure too. This little bag has, looks like, yeah, this is another uh, Carnathy skeleton, an identical one, I believe. Here we have a shifter rogue. This one does look a little bit more bestial 
Um, it's uh, these are also called wear touched creatures as shifters, and legend has it that they're descended from humans and lycanthropes. And you can see it in this one a little bit better. So we got our shifter there, and finally, the interesting. This is a pretty heavy and large medium creature. This is a Sukora Kori. The Kori or Quarry, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, are the manifestations of dreams and nightmares. And he definitely looks fairly nightmarish with his pinchers and his eyes all over his head. And that's a cool medium sized creature there. All right, halfway through. All right. This one feels slightly heavy as well. All right, I've been looking forward to this. This is a living spell. In particular, it's a lightning bolt. So, during the Long War, there was a particular battlefield where that was uh, overwhelmed with magical energy, and some of the magical spells gained sentience. And this is one of them. This in the book itself will give you a template on how you can make pretty much any spell into a living spell creature. So this is the living lightning bolt, which is very cool looking and translucent. And looks like something right out of the speed force. This one looks like another repeat. This is another of our uh, Dolgaunts, the hobgoblin, the corrupted hobgoblin. And next we have Oh, this is different. This is a Kalashtar. Um, and these are beautiful humanoids who have accepted good aligned quarry. Uh, the quarry, these creatures here who manifest, this one here, who is the manifestation of dreams and nightmares, they often need hosts uh, in order to live in our realm, or the Eberron realm. And the Kalashtar are... Um, trained and raised in order to host the good aligned ones. And yeah, he looks really cool with um, ribbons, translucent ribbons coming off of his wrists and biceps. And yeah, that's a very cool looking player character. I believe the Kalashtar are another one of the races that you can play in this adventure book. This is an undying soldier. The undying are sort of, my understanding is they are good aligned undead, where sometimes undead creatures come back to life through vengeance or uh, an overwhelming desire to stay alive for evil purposes. These are creatures who are very much loved in life, and so that love sustains them, and this uh, soldier helps defend the realms. And his shield coming off of him, this is another cool mini. All right, moving on. I'll point out that Belashira here was another rare. We should get three rares and a brick. So unless I missed another one here, we should have one more coming. Here's another living spell. This is Cloud Kill, which is a nice pukish, greenish yellow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it very much looks like what I would expect Cloud Kill to look like. These are super cool minis. I really love these. We could do a whole set of those as far as I'm concerned. Next, this colorful is a colorful mini. It's another Kalashtar. And yeah, she's got uh, a nice kind of, it's like almost feather inspired uh, dress, wielding a dagger. Good player character mini there. Could really just be a human if you wanted it. Probably an elf too. You can't really see her ears. This looks like another undead creature, I believe. Yes, this is another uh, Carnathy skeleton, but this is the, I believe, the uncommon variant, wielding two axes this time, instead of the other one, which had two kind of short swords or daggers. And yeah, the little axes look pretty cool. And the last one in this little box is a Warforged, a straight up just regular Warforged. Um, the Warforged are uh, creatures made, artificial creatures made of wood and metal 
who are forged to be soldiers and who gain sentience somewhere along the way and now still exist trying to find their purpose now that the war is done. And yeah, no, he looks really good. Um, the, yeah, the sheen on the metal armor is slightly different than the kind of red of his wooden metal body underneath. And this sword is nicely, it's a thicker material, so it doesn't bend as easily, I think. All right, we got two more to go. All right. I keep forgetting to check if they're rares or not when I open the boxes, so we'll have to go back and check in a minute if anything jumps out. This is a Radiant Idol. All right. And I can get it out of here. So as you might surmise from the bloody stumps of his wings, this is a fallen angel. The Radiant Idols used to be angels, but who liked being worshipped a little bit too much. And it corrupted them. And they, quote-unquote, fell to earth. Uh, again, this has sort of the same, I feel like, skin effects as the, um, the half ogre over there. I don't really know what it is, but somehow this looks a little different to me. A little better painted. Um, nice definition in his muscles. And face. These are... This feels like a really nicely painted set to me. I think they've come a long way over the years with their painting jobs. Next, we have another Kalistar. And it's the same one, I believe. This one seems to be different. If I can get them out of the bag. Oh yeah, this is, I think, another of our rares. This is a Bone Knight. And I'm not sure if this is a Carnathy. I don't know the history of this one, if it's from Carnath or not. But he is also nicely painted. Very much detail in his armor. Kind of the bone inspired like the Carnathy undead. And I believe his... Is it? I'm trying to see. His right hand looks like it might be backwards, but I guess it's not. He's just holding it in a weird angle. <laughs> Um, right? Like, that's kind of odd. It does look like it's, he's got it bent backwards. Uh, otherwise, very cool looking figure. And that, it would be our third rare. But we have one more in this box. Oh, all right, this is like our little raptor. So one of the uh, regions of Eberron has quite a few dinosaurs on it. And they are, if I'm not mistaken, they are trained and ridden by some halflings who live in the area. And the book talks about, you know, it's nothing quite like seeing a halfling barbarian running towards you on a raptor. And I can quite imagine that. And that seems like one good reason to play a campaign in Eberron. Okay, we've got one more box to go. Okay, our last box. I think this is the heaviest one yet. I did not plan it that way, I promise. All right. What do we have here? Oh, good. This is a gray render. This seems like a great thing to add to your campaign. So these creatures really, really, really want to be your dog. They will find a master, an intelligent creature, and try to bond with it. And if they do, they will do everything they can to serve you. Um, unfortunately, they're fairly chaotic, like uh, your average puppy, and while they may, you know, serve you well and defend you with their lives, they will also probably destroy your house, um, attack anybody who makes them jealous, uh, tear up your newspapers, uh, and maybe even poop on your floors. So, you know, it sounds like a fun, chaotic thing to throw into your uh, adventuring campaign. So that's exciting. Next we have... Oh, this is awesome. This is a dwarf mage rite. The mage rites uh, are, the, these are people who have accepted magic into their everyday lives. They have a couple of like cantrip level spells that they know and they use them to help maybe, it, the book mentions like spice your food or to, you know, mend items with the mending spell. And uh, this dwarf, I think it's a dwarf, yeah, dwarf mage rite. Uh, looks like she has a little spell effect coming out of her hand. And this would be a great player character mini too with the mohawk, a very different kind of dwarf that one of your players may want to play as a character. 
here is our Iron Defender. And as you can see, it looks a lot like our homunculus over there, just without the wings. So we'll have to figure out what's going on with that. Yeah, it looks pretty similar. Uh, Iron Defenders, as you might imagine, are creatures that were created to uh, be companions and defenders for people. Um, I don't know a lot about their lore other than that. But our last one here in this preview brick is a Shifter Druid. And pale skin, but and it got some sideburns going on, so maybe that's some of the shifter animal uh, influence involved in his genetics, but otherwise could easily be um, another. It could be any number of races. You could also just have it a very pale human or elf, or you know, it could be even a furbolg if you squint it a little bit. But another nice detailed mini with a nice pose and a spear. Good player character mini. Okay, so let's put things together and see our concluding thoughts. Thank you again to WizKids for sending us this preview brick. Again, we'll have a full review with full lore when the set comes out in March. You can click the eye in the corner of the screen if you want to see that, if we have it out by now. Otherwise, this is a really interesting set. I think whether or not you want to play a campaign in the Eberron setting. It certainly includes creatures from Mordenkainen's Stone of Foes and the basic rules and the monster manual that you can incorporate into your adventures. Also, there's a lot of really cool player character minis with the artificers and the shifters. Uh, ones that look a little bit less like the traditional warrior dwarves and things like that. So there may be some of those that you like. Also, if there's some creatures here like the living spells that you want to incorporate into your ongoing non eberron campaigns, if you want to, you can go to things like D&D Beyond and uh, you can purchase just specific little parts of the book right, if you don't want the entire adventure. So you can go and you know just purchase that if you like and uh, you can incorporate any of these creatures that have their stat blocks in the Eberron book into your regular campaigns. We also want to thank uh, the Deck of Many for sponsoring this video. We recently got their campaign setting book, Humblewood. The book contains all you need to run a campaign from levels 1 through 5 in a magical new forest setting with 10 new animal-based playable races, plus new spells, monsters, subclasses, and magical items. And today I wanted to share with you the Humblewood reference cards. So as you may know, the deck of many uh, is known for their reference cards. This deck contains 72 tarot-sized cards to support your adventure. There are cards for the custom monsters in the adventure, important NPCs, the new magic items, and new magic spells. The fronts of the card, as you can see, feature the amazing art from the adventure. And the backs have all the important stats and information you need to have at hand when you're running the adventure. You can pick up the adventure and the reference cards individually or bundled into a box together with the book over at humblewood.net. So thank you again for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon down below to be notified when we release new videos, including our full review of the Eberron Rising from the Last War mini set, which should land shortly after uh, the set is released in March. So uh, hopefully we will see you then. Thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and over on our website at gallantgoblin.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.